Thanks for tuning in. Ham Talk Live will be on the air shortly. Please stand by. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. For connectors, cables, and more, call 920-435-2973 or visit pl-259.com. And by ICOM. Heard it? Worked it? Logged it. Visit www.icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information about ICOM radios. It's Ham Radio. Good evening, everyone. It's time for Ham Talk Live, episode number 252, the Long Island CW Club Youth Program, recorded live on Thursday, March 25th, 2021. I'm your host, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ham Talk Live. Tonight, we'll be joined by Rob Zargis. K2 Mike Zulu, and we'll take your calls live in a few minutes. Last week was open lines, and we also had Matt Deutsch in Zero RGT, the chief engineer from WWV here, to tell us about some updates uh, going on there. So if you missed that show, you can listen anytime at hamtalklive.com or on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. And you can catch the rebroadcast on WTWW, that's 5.085 a.m. Saturday afternoons at about 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So we'll be talking about uh, learning CW tonight, specifically with youth, but uh, also uh, for the the non-youth. So uh, get your questions ready to go for Rob here. If you're listening to us live on Thursday night, you can give us a call after the interview by telephone at 859-982-7373. We'll give that number out several more times before the call-in portion of the show. Uh, you can also send a question via Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at HamTalkLive. And if you're on Spreaker listening to us live, you can type comments in here, and that'll pop up on the screen. It's kind of like a little chat room kind of thing. So uh, if you'd like to do that, we welcome you to do that as well. But the telephone number, so you have it handy and ready to go, it's 859-982-7373. And uh, like I said, we'll give that out again later when it's time to call in. So I'll be back with Rob right after this word from ICOM America right here on Ham Talk Live. The great outdoors is calling. Get outside and under the stars with one of ICOM's ultimate SDR transceivers. Stay connected while off the grid. The IC705 is the perfect transceiver for hams who enjoy both the great indoors and outdoors. It's the perfect QRP companion. This base station has features and functionality at the tip of your fingers in a portable package covering HF 6 meters, 2 meters, 70 centimeters, and just under 2 pounds. It has a 4.3 inch color touch screen with live band scope and waterfall, 5 watts with a battery, 10 watts with a power supply. It runs AM, FM, CW, sideband, full D-Star functions, and has integrated GPS, micro USB connector, Bluetooth, wireless LAN, and micro SD card slot, and the speaker mic comes standard. The perfect accessory for the IC705 is the optional backpack with a special compartment for your 705 and room for accessories. Visit the IC705 webpage to view those accessories and free software software available for download or create your own band opening with the IC9700. This transceiver brings direct sampling to the UHF VHF weak signal world. This all mode transceiver is loaded with innovative features that are sure to keep you busy. With a 4.3 inch color touchscreen with real time spectrum scope and waterfall, smooth satellite operation with 99 satellite channels, dual watch operation and full duplex operation in satellite mode. Visually seize the VHF UHF world with ICOM's IC9700. 
Heard it, worked it, logged it. ICOM's IC7300 is a high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design that will far exceed your expectations. This innovative HF transceiver digitizes RF before various receiver stages to reduce the generated inherent noise in different IF stages. The IC7300 is the radio that changed the way entry-level HF is designed. With RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, a large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time spectrum scope and sd memory card slot the real hf fun starts here visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on icom radios right now you could be sitting on a beach sipping a drink with an umbrella in it and enjoying the good life but instead you've decided to listen to ham talk live so we thank you and now here's neil rap with more of the show Welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Thanks to ICOM America for sponsoring the show. Make sure you check out all their cool stuff at icomamerica.com slash amateur. Tonight, Rob Zargis, K2MZ, joins us on the Orlando Amateur Radio Club and Hamcation Zoom line. Rob is from Wista, Massachusetts, and he is a relatively new ham, licensed in late 2019, he immediately caught the CW bug and has become very active in both CW Ops and the Long Island CW Club. Now he is paying it forward by teaching young people just as he learned CW with the Long Island CW Club. Rob is working to rebuild Aries in Western Massachusetts and is the executive director of a CASA program, uh, if you're not familiar with that, that's court-appointed uh, special advocate program uh, that represents uh, young children who need that in the court system and is a professor at Clark University. So, Rob, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me, Neil. We're going to talk a, a lot about learning CW tonight. We're going to focus on the youth some, but... Uh, but we'll we'll get into a little bit of that with uh, with every angle of, of CW, and uh, Howard uh, Bernstein WB two UZE was here a couple of years ago uh, to talk about uh, the then new Long Island CW Club, and since then uh, it's really taken off, and you've got a large uh, youth program uh, that you're leading uh, yourself. And with the uh, pandemic, I know that there's been a big push for classes for young people, and it's really taken off. So um, tell us about the growth of the youth branch of the uh, Long Island CW Club. Yeah, okay. So um, the youth club uh, at the Long Island CW Club started really back in March of uh, 2020 when um, pretty much everything was shutting down and they were starting to be um, you know, restrictions and kids were being sent home from school and they were now being learning school, uh, you know, learning from home and, uh, you know, parents were, were at home <laughs> learning, you know, working from home. And, um, I said to Howard, I said, we should teach some classes for kids and see, you know, that'll give them something to do during the day. And, um, and he thought it was a great idea. And I, and I really thought it was only going to be, maybe a dozen kids from uh, from members of our club, which was about, you know, 400 people at that point, maybe 500 people at that point. Um, and I figured maybe we get a dozen kids that uh, grandkids or kids of the, the members that were interested in it. Well, they got promoted on Facebook and all over the place. And that first round in, in March, late March of uh, 2020, we had 75 kids sign up uh, for our first round of classes. What I thought was going to be a half an hour class three times a week ended up being every day. We ran three different age groups, and uh, it's taken off since then. We've had we're going to cross the 300 number of kids that have taken CW classes and learned CW uh, Morse code uh, with this coming class that starts on April 5th this uh, this next month. So uh, it's been really incredible to to see the growth, and the kids are amazing, and they pick it up so quick. Um, and it's really been a pleasure. I really get a lot of joy out of teaching the kids classes. 
Well, congratulations on on the numbers. That, that's uh, absolutely fabulous that you've been able to to get that many people through. And I know in in teaching kids CW in in school, uh, I've, I've done that a, a few times when we've had requests for it, and they they really get into it. They, they like to take it on. Um, sometimes it's kind of challenging when the letters start piling up, you know, they, they're doing great for the first few. And then when they, when they pile up, then, then it kind of thins out a little bit, but, uh, we, we keep working on it and they've done really well. And, and they really like having this, this, this secret code that they can <laughs> communicate yeah. with. That's not necessarily all that secret, but. But yeah, most definitely. other I mean, teachers we, don't know it. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, you know, we, we I always ask the kids why they want to learn Morse code, and, and about half of them say that they have a grandparent or a, or a parent that's into CW, and they want to be able to communicate with them on air, or they want to be able to talk to their grandpa. I live in Illinois. My grandfather lives in Florida. I want to be able to have a, a conversation in CW with him on the air. And then about uh, about... 25% of the kids do want that secret code. They like the idea of spies and, uh, you know, what, what happened in World War II and things on those lines. So we have some history buff kids. And then we have some that are just their parents are making them take it. And that's okay too, right? <laughs> uh, so, I mean, let's be real. Sometimes they're going to, you're going to take yep. this class because I don't know what to do with you for this half hour. So, um, but, you know, it's been really incredible. We've had very little um, uh, attrition <laughs> in the classes um, kids who start classes tend to finish them, um, and then move on to intermediate and, and advanced classes as well. And, you know, we have kids that are sending upwards of 20, 25 words a minute. I was working with my advanced class tonight, right before this, and, uh, I was sending at 25 words a minute and I had one boy in there that was a hundred percent copy. So, you know, these kids are amazing. They really are. And it, it's something that has been, uh, pretty predominant among the youth community. And, and uh, you know, I work with, with Yoda and, and, and I look at, you know, the modes that w they choose to use during Yoda month and, and many, many times it's CW. Uh, there's just uh, a lot of really good CW operators out there in the youth community. And sometimes we don't always uh, recognize that, but, but they are out there and it, as uh, you're seeing, obviously, it is growing by by uh, no stretch of the imagination. Yeah, I was really shocked. I mean, to be honest with you, in a digital age, why would why would kids be interested in in you know really something that's pretty antiquated? And other than ham operators at this point in the world, there's really nobody else using it. Um, but you know, they really get into it and they love the keys and they like to, you know, they like, they like to be able to, you know, try to increase their speed and, and, you know, the learning process has been awesome. They learn it so fast. And I think, you know, what, what I'm finding is that, that, um, eight to 11, 13 year old brain, boy, they pick it up quick and they go, they are fast learners and they can they can quickly increase speed and i know for a lot of adults who are either getting back into cw or learning cw for the first time increasing speed is real a real difficulty um, but it's been amazing to watch these kids just really kind of crank through it we've had kids as young as five i had one young boy who was five years old he couldn't even read yet he was just learning sight words in kindergarten and he would copy a hundred percent and he would say the letter out loud and his parent would write it down the letters as as he said them and then he wouldn't even be able to read the word that I sent. And he would say, Mom, what does that say? And she would say the word. He would say the word. And I said, that's exactly right. So, right, I mean, it's just amazing how their brains can just absorb this. And, and we know that from language acquisition anyway, right? It's, it's easier to learn a language when you're a child than it is uh, maybe when you're 54 years old like I am. <laughs> well, you're you're talking to uh, another uh, very similar example of that five years old. That's, that's when I... Uh, uh, learned CW and, and got my license and took the, the CW exam uh, back when they had the novice license. And, you know, I, I sat in a room of of all these people and, and no one believed that a five-year-old could do this. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I got 23 letters in a row. You needed 25 uh, the first time around. The next time I got 104. And so... <laughs> They passed the okay. the sheet around 
the room and had everybody sign it because they knew no one would believe that you know a five-year-old could do this and and yeah. i did and uh you know worked my way up to 20 but uh it it uh it, it, it's it's a really cool thing and and yeah you know i was i knew my alphabet at that point but uh i was just starting to read and just starting to put words uh together and and it worked out just great so there there's a lot of opportunity there uh for kids to learn cw early on and uh I'm very uh, grateful that you're taking the time to to do it the right way and and to um, work with them on a daily basis now uh, to to keep everything going and it's uh, it's just great uh, for those out that are out there to learn CW uh, whether they're youth or, or not uh, what are your recommendations for that uh, what do you do with the the club? Uh, to help them to learn and uh, you know is it any different for the youth than the other uh, groups yeah it's really not any different than what we're doing with the youth classes uh, we do do them separately we don't have adults with with youth learning cw but um the only thing you know the only thing is different is we do more characters in a setting with kids than we do with adults adults we tend to do two characters at a time um, we have a beginner's one class, which co- which covers the first 20 characters. There's 40 characters in, in, in Morse code. Um, and then we have a beginner's two that covers the next 20 characters and, and kind of accumulates the number of characters that you're learning and also having to retain. Uh, in the kids' classes, we do that four at a time. And so we in three and a half weeks... Uh, meeting one Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we go through the whole, they learn the whole alphabet, and then we spend a couple of weeks just reviewing, and we're sending words and sending questions and sending all kinds of stuff back and forth uh, to kind of start to get them to see how they put these random characters that they've learned in this random order uh, now that they're words. And as soon as they have vowels, I start sending words uh, so that kids can see how this is going to be used. Um, and so it's the same process. You 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 break down the uh, you know, CW is an auditory language, so you'd want to hear a sound and know what that sound is as a letter in your brain, right? And so um, we don't want kids or adults looking at the, the sheets that have the A and the da, right? We don't want to see those uh, dits and das. We want them to hear a sound, and as soon as they hear a sound, they know what that letter is. Um, and then we just keep practicing and practicing and practicing until um, it becomes second nature for you. And, uh, you know, whether you're an adult or a child, that's the same process. It's just a little speedier for the kids. Um, and we move them on to start learning how to <clears throat> decrease the spaces between the letters. So that's called Farnsworth. Uh, it's a methodology where we sp- set a certain amount of time be, uh, between sent letters. So that gives the, t- the brain uh, an opportunity to process that. Um, and then we use the Koch method, which is a certain order of, of letters. I, I don't think the Koch method really makes a difference. I think you can learn it. And there's several sets of letters that you can learn in, in different orders. Um, you know, CW Ops, for example, uses an, a different methodology where they learn the most frequent letters first and then, um, and then, and then kind of build from there. Um, I don't think it really matters. I think ultimately as you pick one methodology and you commit yourself to it, it takes practice and it takes listening and it takes sending practice, both, both of them, listening and sending. Very good. Um, well, you have those uh, classes available, and, you know, it's called the Long Island CW Club, and I know Howard said, you know, if he knew the the uh, the outpouring <laughs> that was going to take place, they might have picked a different name because it sounds yeah. like it's just for Long Island, but it's really not. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so Long Island Club, uh, CW Club right now, we have members in every state and I think we're up to like almost 40 countries. Um, and, you know, all of our classes are done over Zoom. So, uh, you know, wherever you are in the world, you can log into Zoom at those different times that our class. And right now, I think we're running close to 70 classes a week. Um, so there's always a class going on at some point at the Long Island CW Club, even if you're in the UK, West Coast, East Coast, doesn't matter. Um, and, you know, uh, 
we have people from all over the world. And same with this, the kids club. I expected it to be mostly kids in the Northeast. And we've in our first round, we had kids uh, from Ireland, from Great Britain, uh, from uh, about uh, 22 different states in that first round. And now, um, you know, we have like two or three states that we still don't have kids from. But um, we're, we're 47 states, I think, at this point. But, you know, it's, it's it, the, the technology, which is so regular to us now, I mean, a lot of people weren't using Zoom before COVID hit. And, you know, CW, Long Island CW Club has been using it for three and a half years now. So um, it was pretty innovative back then, but now it's every day. I'm, I'm so sick of Zoom that uh, in, my, in my real world uh, <laughs> job that, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to not ever log on to Zoom again. But if it wasn't for the kids and the other classes, I, I, I sign on every day. But um, it's really... Uh, Anyone who's interested in learning CW, we want to welcome into a very um, low-key, learn-at-your-own-pace kind of environment where you can start with a beginner's class, go to a beginner's two. We have intermediate classes. We have increasing speed classes. We have advanced classes. We have classes for people that want to be able to send and receive at 40 words a minute. And then we send, we have a whole bunch of other classes that are just what would it be in a typical radio club? Um, we have presentations and we have different kinds of things um, and forums that people can attend. And really, there's any time of day you can you can click into our Zoom rooms and you would be in a class that that, that would give you some interest. All right. Well, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back. We're going to take your questions. Uh, we have some on Twitter uh, I've seen that are, are coming in, and uh, we'll open up the phone lines and and take your questions about uh, the youth program specifically, but uh, in general, the Long Island CW Club, where you can learn Morse code right after this word from Tower Electronics, right here on Ham Talk Live. Jerry, what's up, man? I haven't seen you at Sunbucks in a while. I used to see you every morning getting coffee. What's up? Well, I can't afford Sunbucks five days a week anymore. I had to spend my money on PL259s. You know, those antenna projects I've been meaning to do. I had to do them before my HOA finds out I have antennas. That's too bad, Jerry. I miss seeing you and catching up over coffee. You should get your PL259s from Tower Electronics. They have great stuff. Jerry, you're back. Oh, QRM Heterodyne Frappuccino. That's a good choice. How's it going? Did you get all those antennas up before the HOA police showed up? Yeah, I got them all done. Thanks for telling me about Tower Electronics. Now I can have my coffee. I just saved a bunch of money on my PL259s by switching to Tower Electronics. Don't get caught without PL259s. Visit Tower Electronics online at pl-259.com or at a ham fest near you. Or give them a call at 920-435-2973. And be sure to pick up some power poles, adapters, and cables, too. If you're a fan of Tim Allen's TV series, Last Man Standing, you'll have a final chance to contact the show's amateur radio club station before it goes QRT. This is KA0XTT73. The week-long KA6LMS radio special event starts on March 24th at 0000 UTC and runs through 2359 UTC on March 30th. This will be an all-mode, all-band event. KA6 LMS QSL cards will be available for stations who contact the stage directly or through relay stations. Special event certificates, including clean sweep endorsements, will be available via download. For more information, go to www.gsbarc.org slash LMS. Join the conversation. Give us a call at 859-982-7373. Again, the number to call is 859-982-7373. Or, if you'd rather type than talk, tweet us at Ham Talk Live. Now, here's Neil Rapp with more Ham Talk Live. You're listening to Ham Talk Live.
Welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Thanks to Tower Electronics for sponsoring the show tonight to help bring you Ham Talk Live. Scott and Jill will be at Fort Payne, Alabama this weekend. That's on Saturday, March 27th. And uh, then it looks like uh, they've got a break in the schedule, but then uh, Sandwich, Illinois in May, and Newberry, Michigan, and Monroe, Michigan coming up in June. But you can visit them anytime at pl-259.com. You can visit Ham Talk Live every Thursday night at 9 p.m. right here at hamtalklive.com. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And... Without further ado, it's time for the Ham Talk Live Joke of the Week. Now it's time for the Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week, the part of the show where Rick tells us a ham radio joke. The Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week is brought to you by QRM Labs. Now, here's Rick Garrett in 9 GSU with today's Ham Talk Live Joke of the Week. Turns out, I'm just like the computer in my shack. I, too, fall asleep after 10 minutes of inactivity. This has been the Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week with Rick Garrett in 9 GSU. Tune in again next week for another joke from Rick. And we'll wake Rick back up to listen to Ham Talk Live. <laughs> All right, well, it's time for your calls, so give us a call right now. It's time to call, and the phone number is 859-982-7373. Again, it's 859-982-7373, or you can tweet us. It's at Ham Talk Live, or if you're on Spreaker, you can type into the chat, and we will take your questions and comments. We're with uh, Rob uh, from the Long Island CW Club Youth Program. Um, K2 Mike Zulu is his call, and uh, we're, we're talking about CW tonight. So uh, let's see, Rob, we we have a few things that have come in on Twitter here. So uh, we'll take a few of these. Uh, let's see. The first one that came in was from KI five M I T and, uh, wants to know, did anyone use the Koch method to learn CW and is it recommended? So I, I did. Um, I, I took my first classes with the Long Island CW club, even before I had my license, I actually was uh, about 10, 10, uh, characters in before I, I got my, te- took my test and got my call sign my original call sign. Um, but the Koch method, you know, is just one method, right? So um, there's nothing magical about it. It's just what we chose as a club. Um, it's basically a, a, a German um, a psychologist had, dis, the, the, you know, designed uh, a random order of letters to learn uh, so that nobody could memor you know, you weren't supposed to be able to memorize the order. Now, I've taught enough kids the order of Koch order that I haven't memorized. I could tell you the whole thing probably off the top of my head. Um, but, you know, the, the idea is that you're not anticipating what the next letter is that you're learning, that you're actually listening to the sound, and that sound is being trans uh, uh, translated in your brain to a letter. Um, again, it's all about listening, hearing, hearing a sound, and knowing what that, that, that sound is as a letter, as a character. And so, um, do I recommend it? Sure, I do, because that's what we use in the club. Um, but there's other methodologies out there that you could definitely uh, learn. If uh, you know, there's some online uh, tools that use a different methodology, a different uh, order of letters. But but Koch is just one that you can choose from. All right, very good. Uh, thank you for uh, sending that in. Uh, that was from Ki Five MIT. And uh, we have another one here from uh, Jacob, KG7EQN, and, and Long Island CW number 633, by the way. Uh, wants to know some suggestions for getting young children interested in ham radio or CW. I don't want to force them. So uh, I get this question a ton because I, I do all the school stuff, but uh, everybody has their own answer. So uh, let's hear yours. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've found just to, in my short experience in ham radio is if you put some of the technology in their hands and let them play with it, and then and then they want to know more about it, right? And so when it comes to CW, allowing them to to uh, manipulate a, a straight key with a side tone, so they can hear the beeps and the and the dits and the dashes and and the beeping and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I have a I have a twenty three year old daughter who you know every time I come down to my shack, she's like, "What are you going down there to do?" Beep 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 beep. Right? So like she just kind of hears the here's what I'm doing down here and and has that kind of uh, interest in it just from the sound of it. But I think for kids, I think putting that technology, putting a, a, a hand talkie in their hand or letting them sit down at your rig and hearing people from all over the world either talk or, or send CW over the air, uh, th that can really help. Um, but I also don't think that there's anything about, like I said earlier, about 25% of the kids that start with us in, in our CW club are there because their parents are making them take the class and they do very well. They get very interested we keep it really fun and active. It's a 30 minute class. We learn four characters. They come back with homework to send something, uh, based on the previous class. And then we, we crank through the letters and then we're done in 30 minutes. So it's not a long drawn out process in our classes and we make it really fun for them to attend um, but I think the more you can put the technology in their hands uh, you know um, the, the the more interested they get and I will totally agree that that's pretty much my response to that question uh, I got my start in ham radio at, at five years old because dad got a code oscillator out of the closet and started fixing it and it started making noises. Right. And that street key was there, and I was instantly drawn to it that, you know, I could push this button and this thing would beep. Yeah. And I you mean, could I think make CW all very... kinds of cool noises. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, I think CW is very closely related to some of the video games that kids play because they are manipulating a paddle or something in their video game. And they're hearing sounds and all that kind of action. The same thing with CW. They can press the key and they can hear something. And, and I think a lot of kids like that. One of the most uh, sentimental pieces of ham radio gear I have um, is a code oscillator that's in a little uh, jewelry box that was uh, a commemorative version of the one Carol Perry, WB2MGP, used in her classrooms in Long Island uh, to teach CW. And it was just this cheap little little beeper thing, um, and it fit into that. And, and she would always, you know, tell the story of, you know, she had to force the kids to put these things away because they just kept sending CW. They loved sending CW. And they really got into it, and it was it was like a reward that they got to do CW. Uh, and I have that uh, that signed by Carol, and uh, I, I keep that uh, that sealed up because <laughs> that that's very uh, memorable to me because I know that she's. Uh, kind of forged the way on that and uh, and here we are in long island again or so you know uh in staten island that area uh where all of this has happened so um it, it's pretty cool uh let's see uh and then the other you know with the older kids when, when i'm doing this at high school uh, I find again you know you put the technology in front of them they want to do it but then they want to do it themselves right and that's the motivation is they don't want to have to have a control operator and um and you know that's the motivation like you like you said you know you put the technology in front of them and let it go uh, yeah we had we had out of our first 75 kids we had 26 of them then take go on and take their license and pass it um so we were really excited about that they were getting some new ham operators um, for those of you who operate SKCC, uh, the weekend sprint, um, Long Island CW Club is going to be Peter Rabbit, and we'll have one of our kids that will actually be one of the operators on the Peter Rabbit uh, with our club call sign. So uh, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty cool thing. Oh, yeah, that's definitely cool. 
All right, let's see what else we have here. Uh, first of all, uh, <laughs> Chris W4NRG says, Good evening. You recognized my voice earlier and couldn't believe it. Uh, uh, I worked him on the last man standing uh, thing here about an hour ago. So, Chris, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. And uh, also have a message from Dr. Scott Wright, K0MD, that says, do you need to live on Long Island to be a member of the CW Club? And so I guess I got to that one before he had, I had a chance to read it. So, uh, so we got that one in. But thanks for listening, Scott. We appreciate you being there. All right. Let's see. Oh, yes. And then Chris, AA4CB, uh, says, did it, 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 da, da, da. Da da, did it da it, did da did it, da da da, did da it, did it it, da did it, did da. So yes, thank you for listening from Florida, Chris. We appreciate it. <laughs> that was for, for those of you who don't know code. That was hi from Florida. So, uh, all right. So let's see what else do we have here. Um, I. Th- think we are caught up so if you have a question give us a call 859-982-7373 and you know you mentioned uh, something and and i know they've got these morse code calculator things which when i did a thing with the boy scouts they they liked the the visual and having the white and black and everything but but if you're learning this for speed the visual really isn't the best way to go if you can help it. Is that accurate? Yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely say if you have one of those little cheat sheets, throw it in the garbage um, and and learn it by hearing it. Um, that's how you're gonna you're gonna learn it the quickest way is by lear- is is auditory, and then also I think the going you know going forward once you want to increase speed, you don't have time to look at the dits and dashes. You have the, you only have time to hear and write that letter or type that letter. Um, and then at some point, you know, around 18 words a minute, you're going to need to start doing it in your head uh, because you can't write that fast. So, um, you know, I, I, I really recommend that you don't use those uh, visual aids, um, but that you do it all by, by hearing a sound, saying a sound and sending a sound. Right. That's that's kind of my mantra in the kids class. Hear a sound, say the sound, uh, hear a letter, say a letter, send a letter. Right. Yeah, I I totally agree because I did a little bit of that translation thing. I didn't use the visuals, but I I would like count dits and daws and and that was fine until, you know, I got past 13 words a minute (laughs) and when I went there, you know, oh, that didn't work. So I had to kind of change that around a little bit. All right, well, let's see. We have a call on the line, so let's go to the phones. Welcome to Ham Talk Live. Well, I couldn't resist saying hello to you, Neil, and uh, also to Rob. This is Howard, WB2UZE. Hey, Howard. Oh, Howard, great to hear from you. Yeah, nice show, and uh, thank you very much for having Rob on today. Oh, no problem. Thanks for recommending him. Any, so how's uh, everything any... with you? Uh, it, how's everything with you, Neil? It's been a while since we talked. Yeah, things are good. I'm uh, doing the uh, Last Man Standing uh, special event uh, here this week. Uh, things at school are a little slow because of COVID, so we haven't done ham radio in like uh, a year now. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think we may get our chance here in a few weeks. So uh, looking forward to that and. Uh, been working on all this Yoda camp stuff and got married and and got a move planned here in a couple of months. So it, it's been busy. Well, well congratulations. Where, where are you going to be moving to? Uh, it's going to be over in uh, the northern Kentucky area, over by Cincinnati. So uh, we'll we're, we're still working out the final details on that, but uh, looks like uh, that's going to be it. Okay. Well, best of luck on everything. Well, thank you, Howard. And, and uh, Rob, anything here for Howard? Well, I, I, I don't know if you noticed, Howard's got a little bit of a Long Island accent. And that's actually what drew me into CW, to be honest with you. Um, I got involved with 
started looking into ham radio because I was interested in preparedness, and I was going through uh, um, ham radio crash course videos, and I heard this guy with his accent, and my, my mom grew up on Long Island, or in uh, in Brooklyn, actually, um, and had the same similar accent, and I said, ooh, that sounds like a warm cup of coffee. i got to check out that club, and that's how I got involved with Long Island CW Club. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, Neil, um, Rob has done fantastic in, in CW. He, uh, I know this story by heart because it's a, a wonderful thing to report. He came into the club, I think, like October 6th of 2019 and wasn't licensed yet. And by March of the next year, during the COVID uh, lockdown, he had under his belt about 2,500 QSOs already, and he was ready to teach kids so from not having a license in october of 2019 to come the covid lockdown he's teaching kids and he's very active in the club and he's um uh, very active in our uh slow speed net class and he's getting involved in traffic up in new england and he's always on the air um offering his time and he teaches uh, how many classes are you teaching for us a week now rob uh, i think it's 11 11. So, uh, this is what I call CW on steroids, Neil. We don't expect yes. this from everybody, but <laughs> it's very nice to get it once in a while, isn't it, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, it's a challenge to to, uh, to uh, learn something. It's another challenge to teach something, and it's another challenge to teach it to youth. So uh, I'm very proud of uh, all of Rob's accomplishments and to, to keep up with 11 classes. That's uh, amazing. Well, well it I'll brings you, me a lot of joy. Number, yeah, speaking about the number 11, um, it's amazing. The 11-year-olds that Rob has taught are incredible. Um, I can tell you um, a story about uh, one of them, um, a young girl uh, up in New England. Uh, we have um, a number of live QSO classes, Neil, where we get people on the air um, while we're all on Zoom. So, you know, if the CW uh, is too fast uh, for the person who's in the class, um, I'll do the, um, the decoding to take the pressure off them and they can practice on their sending and their protocol. Well, there was an 11-year-old girl that I think was uh, studying with Rob for two or three months, and she just got her general. Um, and, you know, the, there's a German station that we're all working, and it was her turn. And I say, okay, you know, send now and do this and do that. And I happen to notice that she wasn't paying attention to me. And I said, what's this all about? Well, she had the volume down on Zoom because she was ready to do it all herself, and she did the entire QSO herself, including the decoding, without any help, 11-year-old general, uh, and this this uh, young girl was taught by Rob. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Howard, thank you so much for calling in, and uh, we appreciate uh, all that you've done with the uh, the club and getting things rolling, and uh, it's been a wild success, so congratulations. Well, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to... Um, uh, be on your show, Neil. You have a great podcast. I love your voice and all the uh, acoustics that you have on it. Very professionally done. So, uh, you know, thank you for everything you do for Ham Radio, too. All right. I'll let you guys f- finish up and just wanted to pop in and say hello. So uh, good night to everybody. Good night, Howard. Good night, Howard. Thanks. 7-3. Seven, 7-3. Three. Seven, three. So, so, Neil, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you, tell, you, uh, tell the folks how to have their child sign up for classes. Um, is that sure. right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so if you want to just send, if you send me an email, uh, k2mz at yahoo.com, and send me the child's name, age, state, um, I'm missing one thing, name, age, state, grade, uh, and then I need the parents' email, phone, and name as well. If you send that to me in an email, I'll get them signed up. We have a class starting in uh, about 10 days, uh, April 5th. We have about 28 kids signed up from all over the country. Uh, we have also another class, uh, and that's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then we also have a class we're doing for the U.K. Um, kids as well and, and homeschool kids uh, at, new, at 12.30 
uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays as well. Um, so if you're interested in being in one of those classes, that starts in about 10 days, and we can get you all ready to get, get uh, learning CW. Um, but just send me an email, k2mz at yahoo.com. All right, very good. Well, we just have a couple of things here to finish up. And uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Scott Wright, KZMD, informs me that I busted one of the letters. I, I sent an S instead of an L because I couldn't read the screen. Uh, and uh, <laughs> he says, are you sure you need not be a Long Island native or relative to get involved? Because th- this whole accent, I think he's talking about the accent thing here. Right, right. <laughs> no, you don't. It's anybody from any, anywhere in the world can join all right. So once again, uh, thank you so much for, for being here. And yes, let's uh, recap here how to uh, sign up for the Long Island CW Club and how to get the youth signed up. Yeah. So if you want to join the adult club, go to Long Island CW Club dot org, Long Island CW Club, all one word dot O R G. Uh, hit the membership tab and uh, fill out that form and you'll be signed up within a couple of days. Uh, if you want to get your child involved, uh, anywhere from five years old to all the way up to 18, uh, you can send me an email, Rob, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, k2mz at yahoo.com. All right. Well, Rob, thank you so much for being here. And uh uh, great uh, job with the youth and all the uh, 11 classes, and and best of luck on this uh, new one starting up. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Neil. All right. Well, that's a wrap for this week's edition of Ham Talk Live. Thanks to my guest, uh, Rob Zargas, uh, K2MZ, and everybody out there in cyberspace for listening and calling in and typing in. And I invite you back next Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, when Jerry Buxton, N0JY, will be here to talk about the latest news in AMSAT satellite engineering. And for a list of all of our upcoming guests, visit HamTalkLive.com. And if you like HamTalkLive, please leave us a review on uh, Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. That helps other people find the show faster. So for now, this is Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, saying 7375. And uh, I'll catch you on the air with KA6LMS slash 9 and uh, K6M over the next several days. So check out dxsummit.fi for uh, when I'm on. So uh, 7375. And as always, May the good DX be yours.